Hey, welcome to Vice Grip Garage. I just bought this vintage modified race car about a week ago. And, well, the only time I've driven it was on the highway. So I'm going to do the right thing and just take it racing right now. Well, two days. But that seems like right now. Which means I got a long list of stuff to go through to maybe try to be ready for that. I'm going to change the tires, maybe accidentally look at the brakes, change the oil, tune up the engine a little bit. I got that shifter slot I got to fix. I'm going to try to change the seat and then I guess I got a harness. I got to, I'm never going to make it for this race. Basically what a guy is saying, I've got about 314 things to try to check off the old box. I'm going to start with swapping the tires because that seems to be the easiest. Being I have no idea what this setup is and I really haven't even looked at it or measured anything, I'm just going to run exactly what's on the car. So that's no stagger in the rear, which normally you have a little stagger there, but stagger up front. So we got 27.5 in the drinker side front and then 26.5 around the car. So I'm gonna pop these off, run to my friend in town. He's got a tire machine in his garage, you know. These guys here are pretty dry rotted. I'll probably just throw them on some other wheels and just keep them as spares, just in case you cut a steer tire. brake shoes dragging at all so I know I can definitely adjust these out that or they're completely worn off I think a guy should probably go ahead and measure the bolt pattern too see what we got for sure Well, since a guy's got her shot up in the air here, might as well crawl underneath of there and figure out what this rear end is. When I peeked under there before, it kind of looked like a Dana, something out of a truck. Uh, but just out of curiosity's sake, I want to see if I figure out what it is. Yeah, so a guy's thinking this is going to be a Dana 44. And you can tell because of the way that it is. But there's a couple of unique things to a 44. The vent tube on the drinker side axle tube instead of on the pumpkin or housing that's pretty unique and the early 44s had these two plugs instead of just the one that you typically see and then it's kind of got that muffin shaped diff cover it looks really close to a Dana 60 but I'm pretty sure this is going to be a Dana 44 there's a tag that goes on the cover here you can see the rust spot that's gone and sometimes there's a model number or part number stamped in over here that give you the manufacturing date, stuff like that. Sometimes there's a limited slip tag down there. There's gonna be most likely a part number or patent number over here. But what we're after, if it's still there and we're lucky, is on this side, there should be the model number stamped in there, like 44. So I'll get the whisker do out and scrape into that and see if we can figure it out for sure. Guys scraped down her. And we do got a patent number over here. Part number up here. But most importantly, right there is that 44 we were after. So it definitely is a Dana 44. This is also loose, about ready to fall out. So I'm gonna pretend I didn't see that. I'm also going to ignore all of this madness oh boy dana 44 is actually a really common axle uh they're still produced today i think yep and they have front end and rear end variants and the 44 they made their way into early chevy pickups pretty much every jeep produced every model 
uh, International Scouts, and I think they even went in Zuzu Rodeos. Is that a thing? I don't know. Something, something like that. They're fairly stout. It's gonna work just fine for a 283 and a three speed. As far as the gear goes, it is what it is. I'm not gonna take the cover off. I already know it's probably welded. It definitely is a locked rear. Chances of it being a mini spool are, well, they're not there. I'm sure they just zzz, 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 cause that's what you did in the old days. So a guy tried to tighten that top bolt in that diff and she's wallered out, stripped. So I just kind of tucked her in and we'll just say that's good enough. I did make sure it was full of gear oil, wiped her down a little bit, but I think we should move on to the brakes now. See if we got anything left on all four corners. Of course she's drum and that's, uh, well, she's factory. They are moving really easy. Oh, maybe not this one though. Got some drag on that one. Would be nice to stop late a little bit. And I don't know if I need to put shoes on it. I suppose now is the time to do it. So I'll try to pop these drums off if they're not seized on there and see what we got. Hello. What are you going to tell me? Oh, you're stuck. That's what you're doing. Clients. So this is looking pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna have to do anything. Shoes have plenty of life left on them. All the springs look fine. They're not rotted or rusted out. Keeper hardware is okay. Pop the dust cap off. Make sure we had a nail or something in here. And it sounds great. Spins great. There's no play in it whatsoever. I also don't see evidence of the wheel cylinder leaking back here or on this side. And this only has very, very light grooves in it. So, left front is just fine. I was just gonna clean her up with some brake clean and stick her back together. Better than brute. Drinker side front, a lot of the same story. Shoes are okay, wheel cylinder looks fine. Wheel bearing is a-okay, except the drum on this side is shot. There's a lot of heavy pitting and some pretty deep grooves in it. So I'm gonna do the right thing and just stick this back on for now. And then I'll just add it to my shopping list if a guy can find one of those. I'll pop around down the road. You know, now that a guy's hooked his peepers on a little harder, I think the dust cap, the hub, and the brake drum are all different than the driver's side. And I'm thinking that maybe all this has been updated on at some point, which would make sense. This one's in a little worse shape. Might be the elder. I also checked out the pins and everything else, and I think the front's about as good as it's gonna get. You know, we'll just ignore this stuff for now. It's worked for 60 years. It's fine. Rear is the same story. Good shoes. She's been mantinitzed on pretty good. While well, she's just dangling in the air here, I think I'm going to throw some grease in the old snot pimples. Get all that done. And then we'll put the new tires on. That one's full. Yep. Yep. Ouch. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's gonna take a whole tube just to do the front end here. Yeah. Well, she's been greased up pretty good too. I don't know what this is. I just, I gotta stop looking at it. Tickle, tickle. Well, you would fall. How about you? Same story. Anything up here? No, nope. just a bolt. Forearms just burning. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Wonder what Clint Black's doing today. 
Feller might be surprised to know, if and you don't already, there are a ton of rules around dirt track racing. A lot of people think you just turn left and go fast, but they do a great job of making sure that it's pretty fair. A huge majority of those rules come into play with tires and wheels, and I only know a fraction of them. But there's diameter and width and spacers and size and whether or not you can groove and sipe and tread pattern and the list goes on and on and on and on. Now I don't know a lot about the vintage series so I decided to go with a safe tire and up here in Minnesota, Wisconsin they even have a tire called Wasoda. So I went with the 35W which is like a chain link pattern probably similar I'm guessing to what they run in like hobby stock. This tire that was on it is called an E-Mod tire and it has a different tread pattern. You can see that it's grooved and most likely I'd get in trouble for trying to run something like that. So I'm going to do the same stagger as well that Luke had on the car and the previous owner also had on the car which was no stagger in the rear which is different and a little stagger up front and we can always play with that in the future. If you're running roundy rounds you usually like to have some stagger in the right rear. Helps the guy turn left. But I'll go grab those and pop them on. Nothing like a fresh set of tires, but she stings the old bills hold. These are 26.5, 815. And three of these are going to be that except the right front. And they look a little ballooned right now. I got about twice as much air pressure in them as you would at the track. I just wanted to make sure the bead was just going to hang in there for a guy. Hip? Ah. Oh, not. Ah. Hip. Ah. Can't believe I didn't lose any of these lug nuts. Usually I lay them on the floor and I kick them to Oklahoma. Well, what in the devil is going on here? Those white letters sure look a lot better than that faded yellow stuff. I did find something else to add to my list. These lugs are barely going on. There's only a, I don't know, 70% of the thread. So it needs new studs at minimum on this side. This back one seemed okay. And well, I just can't remember the other side yet. Guy needs to start writing this stuff down. We got brakes, we got tires. I think next we should deal with the shifter. It's already a pain reaching between your legs to shift, but when it's got 19 feet of slop in it, it's slightly inconvenient. And then we can figure out what kind of three speed it is in the first place, I suppose, and see if we could tighten her up a little bit and get my shift time from two minutes and 14 seconds down to 37 seconds. That would be nice. The guy's got to drag his belly under here. All right, so, this is a, that's a 351 Muncie, uh, seven bolt cover. And how I could tell is, see how there's two bolt holes on the bottom and then one up on the top. That's gonna be your 351. Now the 343 Muncie looks almost absolutely identical. There's very small case changes, but it's a seven bolt cover as well. But back here, it's gonna have these two holes on the top and then the one on the bottom. So that's a 351. First gear is synchronized, which is a good thing. Um, look at this drive shaft. That's pretty cool. So onto the shifter up here. I think where we're getting all of our play is up here on the handle. Yeah, there's a lot there, so I can tighten this up. But also, the pin is worn pretty significantly. And you can see how wobbled out it is. And these are really worn. And also, linkage has been dragging. I don't know if he cut those. I think he must have cut them. But I'm wondering if they're not 
dragging in here as well. So this might need to be clearanced a little bit, but for starters, I'll get some ranches on this, tighten that up. And then I think I can slide some washers into here. I mean, that is a lot of slop. But I'm thinking this is all going to need to be replaced. And I've never seen... This must be like a universal adapter Rooney thing. But I don't know. If you fellers got any ideas for a different three-speed shifter for this thing, to maybe shoot her out on the outside of my leg, or just something easier to shift than this, if I got to change it anyway, might as well update on her, right? Yep, that's a good idea. I'm gonna to try to take the shift rod off the two, three lever and slide a washer in there and take some of that wobble out of there. The one, the two shift is just a bear in this thing. I mean, they all are, but between the legs makes it even tougher and she's pretty worn out. So maybe some washers will help. No, no, it won't. Great. Well, I got her shimmed out pretty much as best as I can but the pin is pretty worn out, but if you get used to it, you just kind of have to just, that's first, second. So you gotta kind of shake her in neutral, and then you can come across. That's about as good as it's gonna get. Unfortunately, when you're in a race, you don't really think about just waiting to shake it. You just want that gear now, but Good as that's going to get until I can figure out some sort of replacement for that thing. Well, everything is kind of already apart in here. I think I'm going to tackle this seat and put a different one in. This is a nice seat and they do great for protection and they're good for roundy rounds because you got the ribalizers here and they just kind of hold you in place and you don't have to rely on your harness as much. The problem is the thigh exercisers down here, it doesn't let my leg shoot out as wide as I need it to because I'm taller. I need my legs kind of farther apart. I'd like to kind of just rest my knee against that bar over there, but this isn't letting me do that. And just sitting in it for like five minutes is really painful. So I got something different. And actually the guy that I got the car from was able to get Luke's original seat. And I want to put that in anyway, but it's the design that I'm used to. And it's actually the same design, or pretty close to the same design as in Independence here. Kind of just a plastic bucket. I don't think it has a high head, but I'll go get that out from storage and we'll take a look at it and get her put in. So this is the last known seat that Luke ran. And as you can see, it actually is the same seat as Independence. So Guy can wall her around in here a little bit more. And it's set up for a five point. And I know that it'll fit the roll bar, shoulder straps going right there. Although I should mention, although it probably create a lot of work for me, I'm not sure that that meets roll bar code any well. This whole roll bar is, you know, just it's, it might work for vintage and that's about it is what I'm getting at. Anywho, the bracketry down here, I'm not sure if this is original to the car or the last feller made this up specifically for this seat. So I do need to take some measurements down here. I think that's eight inches center to center and just make sure that what we got going on in here is gonna work. Otherwise I might have to order in some different bracketry. Well, they measure eight underneath, but I think they're in kind of kitty wampus here because they don't measure that on top. I'm just gonna zip, it's only four bolts. I'm just gonna zip this out quick, pull the seat out, then we'll get a closer look 
at uh, what we got going on. I'm thinking it might be the original. There's the bolts for the lap harness and looks like a hole for the dolphin strap there. So hopefully this thing just pops right in there. 104 months later, those are not the original brackets, but I think I can make them work. Got one wallered out, wallered out, and I loosened them from the bottom. So I got just a little bit of play in them. And now I'm going to run new hardware into the seat first, and then I'll center her down to the floor. And by gosh, I think she's gonna work. Might be just a little too far back. Guy's melon might be banging off the roll bar, but that's okay. Keeps the guy awake. Well, guy got her in here. Now it's time to see if I fit better. Let's get the old drum roll going. Oh. How come, uh, how come you didn't do the old drum roll? It's a rock one. Anywho, I fit better in here. I think that was the goal. Yeah, this is, well, marginally better. The problem is I got the old knockout bar back here now, and that is definitely illegal. But we're just gonna pretend I didn't know that and send it. Oh, shift here. I don't know. It's, it's, well, we can't be picky. That's what it is. Good thing I didn't eat lunch today. Well, guys started poking around in here a little bit more. Not really going to make any changes. Just want to make sure everything's up to snuff before I hit the track. And I already noticed that, well, there's no brake juice in here. I mean, at all. That's, she's empty. And a couple little things like vacuum cap is busted off so we got a vacuum leak little things like that uh that's a 600 i think yep so that's a 600 edelbrock again we got a lion's intake and i missed this the first time i looked at it down here that rectangle with that sharp triangle these are actually power pack heads which back then were a really hot head for the 283s and 327s these have small valves, I think a 17215, somewhere around there. And depending on how you got them decked and your gasket thickness, you can get 58 to 60 cc's. So your compression ratio, you can get up to about 10 and a half with these, which explains why there's uh, race fuel in the back here. I don't know what he's got going on inside of this, but if he was confident enough to run a 283, I imagine there's a cam and who knows what else. And it's worth mentioning, by the by, this is not the original 283 from the 60s. Uh, that's the 283 that he put together um, when he was doing the restoration. But I imagine he probably used a lot of the same or similar parts. And a couple things I noticed, look at this. I didn't see this either. He's got dual coolers up here and these are actually for the power steering pump so those come right around up through here right in the power steering system so he must have been fighting that and that's kind of how he fixed that manual fuel pump i will be changing this uh comes into a post filter right into the carb but these edelbrocks they're kind of notorious for being finicky if you can't get a consistent fuel pressure. So I'm probably going to put a different filter set up and a regulator in here. And then I can actually get the carburetor fine-tuned. Some of you might have noticed, and I think a couple even commented when I romped on it on the last video, she puffed black, so it's definitely running rich. But I'm not going to change that yet either. You want them fat and happy, especially when you're five, 6,000 RPM. And I'm sure he did that for safety reasons. And I'm not gonna tune on a carburetor until I get a regulator in here and get a consistent fuel pressure. Uh, then I'll take a look at that. And the same with the plugs. I'm not even gonna pull those out because if you think about it, this thing's just been yard driven and 
basically put it around. I know they're going to be fouled and sooty from just sitting there idling most of the time. So I got to get out there and run this thing wide open. And then we can start reading plugs and see what's going on. And some of you might think, well, just throw in an AFR gauge. Well, that works if you want to read an engine as a whole. But if you really want to fine tune it, reading plugs is the way to go. You can see what each and every cylinder is doing and make adjustments. Um, same with the timing. It's not going to touch it. There is an Excel ignition coil up there. Uh, but nothing really fancy otherwise. It's got shorty block hugger headers. Go straight down. Of course those swoop out right here. No fan clutch, of course, just a direct drive. Big truck radiator, no idea what this is yet. She's full of juice, I already checked that out. But I think what we'll do is I'll kind of cap up a few vacuum leaks that I found. And I'm gonna drop the oil on this thing. And splurged, it was on sale. I'm gonna be honest, it was only eight more dollars, but I got some royal purple I'm gonna put in this thing and a Wix filter. And we'll take a look and see what the oil looks like. And other than that, I think we're just going to leave this thing be and see how it does. Well, we'll see what this tells a guy. Yep. That's pretty good. Can't really see what kind of filter that is yet. And that's a perlator. I'm gonna fall down. Well, I just can't believe it. But I guess I got to, because I'm looking right at it. Oh, it's, it's, it wants to come out right now. Well, there was no metal on the drain plug later or in the oil, so I think we can assume she's a pretty healthy engine yet, which is, that's really good news, actually. So I'm gonna dump some oil in it and fire it up, make sure we got pressure still and then check for the old leaks. You know, a guy just does not know what kind of weight oil Feller was running. I just guessed him what was a 530 to start. He could have been running a 1030, 1040, 2050, I don't know. We'll just have to make note. It idled at 50 pounds cold before. So we'll fire it up and just see how it's doing. pressure it holds. Well I wiped 67.8 years of dirt off the seat. Time to move on to the harness here. I ended up with race quip because of the color here. I don't know what do you guys think about I mean you know I thought it made sense but I did look at black and then there's also platinum which is just gray. And also by the way why is it spelled G-R-A-Y and also G-R-E-Y? Gray! Or gray. Life's mysteries. Anywho, I went with the last style again. I like this style. They're a little bit cucumbery getting in, but what matters is getting out. When you hit that latch, she just explodes. Another thing I noticed, RCI, you gotta put everything together. But this race clip one, has everything already ready to rock, you basically just bolt it in and cinch it down. Well, that went in really fast, actually, since all the bolt holes were already in here. I do got to get some zip ties and roll up the slack and cinch that down, but I think that looks great. If you guys think I should have went with a different color, put that down there in the comments and I'll take a look at her. Like I say, I was thinking about black or gray, but I was kind of thinking maybe red would, you know, pop in here. I got one other thing to do this quick. It's important. 
That's cherry flavor. Well, I'll get her down off the up in the air leg crushers and we'll load it up on the trailer. Well, we did go on ahead and get her loaded up just in time. She's starting to rain out here. That's why a guy always wears a forehead on him. You just never know. We had a pretty good day. My favorite part is just documenting some of the history on this car. We know more about the chassis now and some of the smaller things he did to it. Next time you see it, I'm going to be feeding her every onion I can get my hands on. So if you're not subscribed, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. Thanks guys for watching. We'll see you next time.